Welcome to Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory. Kit review time. A uh, little bit something a bit different, perhaps you've seen it before, perhaps you haven't. This is Airfix's brand new Gloucester Javelin. This is 148 scale. Um, I don't think we've ever seen this before in any scales. In fact, it's pretty much a, a, a not very well known aircraft. Quite a short lived career, um, developed in the 1950s. It was the first all weather delta wing jet the RAF had. Very large tail on it, which is you know what sort of makes it it's a it's massive fin sort of tornado size uh, fin on the back as i said it's one of those crossover type aircraft very early so it's still got massive cannons in the wings as well as having what was then state of the art um radar intercept radar so you had um the pilot and the navigator sitting in tandem um and then obviously you know it was the early era of using radars with guided missiles and things like that so what do we get basically a very large box we've got some nice uh, well you can see up here um some cad type stuff on the top here and then around here we've got some nice ones showing the markings that you can actually do it in. So we've got here, this is the FAW9R version or nine. So we've got it in the uh, bare metal colors. We've got it in the camo of the era and everything else. Quite a strong box. I must admit, it seems to be a little bit stronger than the others. The usual Airfix blurb on the back. So we just need to cut ourselves in. I have not looked at this kit at all. So this is all brand new to me as it is to you. So in the box, if we can get in it, there we go. As I say, quite a, a nice strong box. Usual thing, we have one very large bag all chucked in together, which I don't like to see, prefer to see it, you know, separately. So what we'll do, we'll have a quick look through the instructions first, and then we'll move on to the actual itself. So we've got the decals as well. Plug them out of the way. One of those. So, Airfix's standard um, type instructions, as we can see here. So, as you go the way, right the way through, um, blurb about the aircraft, wheel wells going in the cockpit tub, and then we've got a sort of forward fuselage. Uh, it's going to go in with a sort of top part as well, with the underside. Goes in quite nicely. Uh, and then we've got, oh, it's actually an inner tub. That's a little bit different. So, actually, what we've got here is a inner tub set which I presume will have the inside all of the other things so you've got an inner then an outer goes right the way around it a bit different never seen that before uh, intakes so it looks like we've got full length uh, intakes which are quite nice which go down to obviously to the first stage uh, compressor blades uh, going right the way in, we've got a wing spar going on, we've got to open up some holes as we'd imagine. Um, there is various variants of this, it was only around for a very short time, but in that time they did produce quite a few different variants. So um, I imagine perhaps later on down the road we might see other incarnations of this kit as we go through. Again, showing these huge tailpipes going down into there as well. As I said, if you know your lightnings, it's the sort of stack the other way. And then going right the way through. So we've got two fuselage halves going in. So it's quite complex the way this actually all goes together. Something a little bit different. I haven't seen this way of sort of doing it all before. Front of the intakes going in there. Wheel wells, they look nice and deep with plenty of detail. We'll have a look for, for those in a moment. And then we've got uh, positionable uh, speed brakes on the back of this. It has a system where they open up like this, which are inside the wing though. Something a little bit different. We've got positionable control surfaces. Quite a nice touch again. This is a mirror for the other side. This giant fin goes on the top, and it has again the fin on the top, the uh, vertical uh, plane, sorry, the horizontal plane uh, is movable as well, as well as the edges of them as well, which is quite nice. So we've got plenty of detail going all down here. Options for a gear up or down. We do have uh, weight on wheels, which is quite a nice touch. So you've got the flat spot as we go through on those and generally working in. It looks quite complex, to be honest. Um, it, it is, it seems to be, you know, this thing of 148 scale, obviously I'm thinking of the Lightning in comparison to this, because it's a similar type of um, aircraft and things like that. It seems to have moved on a little bit from there. More detail going around the cockpit areas. It has a funny way the cockpit opens up, because you have two that move back independently of each other, as we can see here. So you can position them in. Refueling probe going in, it is an option. You can have it on or off. We've got FOD covers, which is another little nice touch, as we can see here, peach 17. Um, nice, and tail ones as well. So if that is intakes or a little bit problematic, you don't like them, you can do it. We have a boarding ladder as well, something that you 
as I said, you have to have there one because it fits over the side of the intake and goes through. We've got some markings, so we can see down here. So we've got at the top, we've got it in the wraparound one, which is uh, Singapore 1960s. Okay, then we've got this very nice one down here in the metal. And on the back, again, we've got one from 1962. I think this only actually was in service for something like six or seven years. I know it wasn't in service very long. It was very quickly superseded by other aircraft. But it does look very, very promising. Decals, I am led to believe they are cartographed decals, which seems to be about right. It doesn't say they're by cartographed, but I have heard it is by cartographed. So I'm just looking down here. Um, uh, it actually does say cartograph. We've got just down here, a little one here. That's where I saw it. But I don't know. They do look quite good. They look, seem pretty much in register to me. The colours seem a little bit muted down, which is the type of thing we want. It is on this flat thing. I won't go over it again. You've seen my other reviews and my opinions on that. It's not brilliant. I prefer to see them just normal and go through. But as I said, very nice, very bright, very big. Quite a few to go on, but they're separated nicely, so it shouldn't be too bad. Right, we have, <coughs> this is the sheet for all of those tiny little bits everywhere. So as you can see, plenty of detail to go on on these, um, putting in all these placements. We've even got decals for the intake covers for the FOD guards and things like that as we go right the way through. So again, quite nice. Now, deceptively, this is quite a large aircraft, okay? And it doesn't look it when you see it flying around. It looks quite small, but it's actually quite a lump. <laughs> So in the bag we get a pile of screws in one bag which are horribly all rubbing up against each other. So what we'll do is we'll work our way through one at a time. Since we've got them here we'll have a look at the clear parts. So the clear parts themselves as you can see, includes a fingernail, you might be able to see we seem to be very very nice but they have got rub on. I have to say this one down the back here has got a scuff in it already and that is just where it's in the bag rubbing around in there. That's why I say if they're a separate bag they don't all jostle around but they do look to be lovely and clear. Okay you've got a little bit of movement in them and those scuffs are really annoying but actually I quite like that. That is very nicely done. That's probably one of Airfix's best to date for doing clears. Um, minimal amount of work. It has got a little bit of wobble in there, but it's a curve, so you know it's actually bulged out quite a bit. Then it's wrapped around. So it's very hard to get that all to be sort of you know uniform in there. But that actually doesn't look too bad at all. Hopefully you can see that catching around, moving in the light. Okay, so let's just keep them very nice and safe and pop them down there. Okay, first up, nice big sprue down here. But just having a look. What we are seeing immediately is there's a little bit of texture to the plastic, okay? It's got, I call it scratchy, it's not polished, okay? But that said, we do have very, very nice recessed panel lines going all over this. All look to be extremely uniform, they're all straight, uh, and they look to be completely in scale. So looking at all of these, as I say, hopefully the camera can these out. Excuse the noise, we're actually having a bit of a monsoon here at the moment and I've been waiting to film for the last three hours and it's still going so I've had to push on. But as you can probably see we seem to be very very nice in all of those parts. These guys here which are the actual insides of the cockpits, again very nice detail. This is why it has it. So this tub, you've got this system in, we'll see it in a moment, you've got an outer and an inner. It's a bit like when you build helicopters. Again, very nicely detailed, no problem at all. It actually reminds me of resin. Looking at these parts, they look very resin-esque of doing it. So we've got these two down the bottom here as well. Again, because they're on the curve, we've got a slight bit where they don't join up onto the actual edges. What I'm talking about is these bits just down here. They don't quite go all the way and join up, so you'll need to take care of that, but it is particularly hard to mould round there. Looking on the inside, Again, the ejector pins are all sort of flat down, everything else, I don't think they're going to interfere with anything. These are these holes that you've got to open up. Okay, next up, <clears throat> so immediately grabs you our eye is the cockpit, just down here in this huge bulge, which will be the nose wheel well down there, and the actual cockpit. So we've got nice detail inside these cockpits. They seem to be very much on the ball, no problem with that at all. Again, it's quite chunky, but it does work. It looks like it's going to go together. You know, okay, this probably, these panel lines, these are the ones on the nose, they do look particularly big. They look quite huge, but certainly looking at the rest of it, 
they seem to be okay. I think by the time it's had a wash and everything else like that, it will be good. It's just that when I look at <coughs> panel lines on this one, okay, in here to here, these are a lot deeper, a lot heavier. So I think it may have a, a little bit of continuity problem as you go through. But again, looking at all the pipes, the intake pipes, this top detail, got this lovely detail just down here, as you can see, loads of riveting and everything else. This is the top plate to that huge tail. Okay, the nose looks good. We've got no sink marks, no nasties or anything at all on this one. Does the to look okay. Okay, okay, a bit annoying, but sometimes you have to live with certain things. We have got ejector pins in all the intakes, or these could be the exhausts, whichever ones they are. A little bit annoying that they're like that, but you know, sort of thing we can live with. Tends to be pretty good, can't? Fours and against. Okay. As you can see here, we've got lovely detail down in this, with all this riveting, uh, all these access panels and everything all on here. Absolutely lovely. So hopefully you can see no problems with those at all. I think, as I said, they're gonna take a wash and absolute treat. It's say it's got this texture, but the texture seems to work. I don't know yet. It's, it's very, very fine. It's almost like it's got a dead flat coat over it. So obviously it'll take paint very nicely, but there we go. But again, very nice, no problem with that at all. All the ejector pins are sunk, so they're not poking up and producing into anything. Very nice. Okay, top to the wings. So as you can imagine, more of this uh, paneling all the way over. The access points for the gun just down here, okay, and the panels this is where these speed brakes go, top and bottom. But generally, as you look over it, you can probably see it has absolute beautiful texture to it and we've got these vortex generators all over the top of the wings okay which are funny because they're all different angles trying to generate more rough air for the control surfaces to be more effective okay and it is nice because on this side obviously the recessing is uh, inward so obviously the riveting but we've got raised rivets on the other side so it's not like they've just gone along the thing of saying well everything's recessed so we have got raised rivets on this one over here which is quite a nice touch how oh, well Hopefully the camera will pick it up. That's quite a nice touch in there. So that's your wings. Now we're getting into the little bit. So we've got control surfaces, refueling, these are these brakes. Okay, again, this gear system, very heavy handed, not very crisp at all. Parts for these engines, they seem to be okay. Again, we've got ejector pin marks on the inside, which is not brilliant, but we can live with it. Seem to be pretty good all over. We've got just down here, we've got these, uh, Actual wheel wells, no problem with those at all. They seem to have quite nice detail. Unfortunately, it's a little bit softly molded. We'd like to have seen it a little bit rougher, a little bit harder, things like that. But that's no problem with those. You can sort of live with that, liven it up, some cabling, some wiring, some hydraulic work in there to take care of those. Okay, so next up, we've got the uh, intake pipes. As I said, it's a shame. We've got ejector pin marks all in those, you know, are oh, you going to see them? I don't know. You can pop FOD covers on them and you're not going to worry about it at all. So if you do it down the ground, you're not going to worry about these. It's just they're a bit of a pain in there, but nothing that a skinny stick can't take care of. The actual uh, little parts down on here, we seem to be all okay. They seem to be over all right. We've got no um, ejector pin marks, things like that in these. These seem to be all very, very nice. As I say, these pipes areas, you can see it's just one of those things. The weapons look all very good. We've got the missiles, they all look very, very nice. The fins, we've got the bay. This is the nose wheel, obviously goes up inside, which is what we could see down through the bottom. Okay, engine blades themselves, very, very crude, but again, by the time you see up there, you won't see much. All the little parts, we've got no real visible signs of flash or anything else, it all looks quite nice down in here. You know, we've got down here the no ejector pin marks, which is quite a nice touch like just down in this area here for these flaps as they deploy down. The ejector seat, okay, a little bit basic, but it'd be quite straightforward to replace that with a resin one if you wanted to go down that route to liven it up. So yes, and that's the net. We're all looking half and half at the moment. Um, fuel tanks, a little bit crude, perhaps, you know, quite chunky, uh, but do seem to be in scale. The gear themselves, as you can see just down here, quite softly molded, I don't know, might need just to be livened up, but as you can see on these fuel tanks, things like that. Just move this camera out, just a touch. Pretty much, I would say, I have to say, looking at all of these parts, it's gonna be, I think, like a Marmite kit. You're either gonna love this kit, 
or you're going to hate it. Obviously, we haven't built it, so we don't know how it's going to go together. But assuming it goes together quite nicely and no problem at all, it should make a very nice, very impressive kit. So it's got this huge tail on this thing. So it's going to sit and it's going to be around about this big. It's going to be a big lump sat here with a huge tail. Nice big delta wing on it and everything else. Be very, very impressive. And I think once the aftermarket guys jump on this, obviously seats, I would think, are pretty much a must on this because it's got a nice big open cockpit. But little things, having the FOD covers in there so you can close them up, it's quite a nice touch. You've got the boarding ladder as well so you can put some removed four flight tanks on it, have it looking like it's powered down and sat there and uh, put it on a simple base and have a very nice diorama process for this one. It's a 50 quid kit. Um, you know, and obviously in this day and age, sometimes 50 quid gets you a lot of plastic, okay? Sometimes it doesn't at all. I think, you know, Airfix are still keeping in that nice mid-range where, you know, the kits are of a high quality, they're not amazing quality, but are a high quality at a reasonable price. As I said, this is getting quite expensive now. It's 50 pound for this particular one. You may be able to pick it up cheaper online, but the retail is 50 and I did pay 49.50 for it. So, you know, as I said, for the money, I think it's probably well worth it. You are getting a lot of plastic in the box, and I would hope it goes together really, really well. Hope you enjoyed the review, and if you have, join me again next time.